Good morning, everyone. I woke up this morning with some, I don't know, inspiration, I guess, and I was going to play around. And then I thought, hey, why don't I turn on the camera and share this process with some of my YouTube friends? I think it would be fun anyway. I, um, I ordered some really cool mohair. It is by Rainbow Twist Hand Spun. She's on Etsy. And this is Yearling Mohair. And it is so beautiful. But when it came in the mail, I thought, oh my goodness, this would be the most beautiful fairy hair ever. And then I thought, oh, then I'd have to make fairy wings. I'm not in the mood for making wings. I thought, what about an elf? Let's make an elf. So <laughs> I went to my stash and um, looked at my sculpts and thought, what do I have that says elf? And I have this little sculpt that um, I hadn't done. And it's just been sitting back there for a long time. And uh, I never reborned it. And I thought, she is going to make the coolest elf ever. But she just has an elfy face. Am I wrong? Look at this. This little wrinkled brow and this these little eyes that go up a little bit and that tiny mouth. I think it's going to be great. So what I needed to do was modify her ears. And I began to cut them off like I did with the avatar. But I learned with the avatar that taking them off and building them on and trying to keep them on there was just too much of a headache. So I'm going to build the ear on top of the existing ear. It's gonna be a little tricky because I have this, this little ledge here, but I don't wanna disrupt the vinyl. I got into some bad space last time when I tried to do that. What I'm going to use is Aves two-part epoxy, this stuff. Two-part epoxy that you mix together and it will cure all by itself. Now, you might be asking, why not use Sculpey? And I'm asking myself that. Why didn't I use Sculpey? It obviously, Super Sculpey matches this better. Um, it doesn't air dry, so I have as much working time as I want because it's not going to cure until I bake it. The, um, the bake temperature is compatible with this baby. And I think that people have had um, success putting Genesis Heats of Paint on Sculpey. So if you are not familiar with sculpting and you're just giving sculpting and you're giving it a try for the first time, I would suggest go ahead and use Sculpey. I think that might be the better plan because with this, it's dark and it dries even darker. And I don't know if it likes Genesis Heat Set Paint, and I don't know if it likes to be baked. I went online and did some research, couldn't find a lot of information about it, but I did have some really nice guy said, hey, you know what, I use this to fix some radiator parts on my car, and, um, and it gets pretty hot down there, and it's been three years, and it's still good, so I think you're gonna be all right. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna give it a try, and that'll make it more fun. You guys can experiment with me. So all I'm gonna do is pop that on there and start shaping an ear. I've already done the ear on this side, as you can see. I tried to make my transitions nice and clean so I wouldn't have to go over them next time. That just means that where the vinyl meets the epoxy, it's seamless. You don't wanna be able to see that you've added that on down the road. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Get this as smooth as you can. Get it just the way you like it, the best that you can, because it's easier to do it here than it is to get a teeny weeny little piece of sandpaper and do this. That is going to blow your mind. You're not gonna wanna do that. So do the best you can while your epoxy is still wet. Now, this epoxy, um, I think the cure time is like, I think you can still play with it after 25 minutes to half an hour but it starts to get flaky, in my opinion, and not as much fun to work with. So what I'm doing is I'm just using these little silicone tools. You don't need fancy tools to sculpt. Your best tool you're ever going to have are your fingers. It's just, that's the way it goes. Um, nothing works like, like fingers, and I would probably be using mine more if I weren't in these darn rubber gloves today. So I'm thinking about doing this baby in lots of colors. I am going to go online and take a look at other Elfie babies for inspiration. Everything we all make, we're inspired by something else. Even if it's stars and moons and grass and kids and, and experiences, we're inspired. It's okay to be inspired.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, excuse my groggy voice. I didn't get much sleep last night. Our alarm system went off, and the alarm company called, and there was all kinds of craziness. It detected an intruder through the master bedroom. And um, sure enough, the master bedroom window was cracked open. Can you believe it? How creepy is that? We didn't see anybody, the dog didn't bark. It also detected some motion. So needless to say, I could not go back to sleep. <laughs> there wasn't any more trouble after that, but um, it, was, it was quite dramatic. Here we are with this elf baby and um, the ears cured perfectly. The transitions are still nice, meaning that we have smoothness from epoxy to vinyl and I don't have to do any crazy sanding and worrying. They're attached really well. And um, I did a little bit, just a tiny bit of sanding on this nose. I went ahead and put a nose on her. I didn't make it really big or different, just gave it a little bit more of a turned up look. And I really like it. Now we have to see if that darn Genesis heats up paint is gonna stick. So I'm experimenting and you're experimenting with me. I think what I'm going to do is use a little thinning medium. That's the thick stuff because I think I want to keep this paint on the thick side. Um, I don't mind having to do a bunch of layers, um, but putting it on, I really want it to stick. And um, thinning medium will mix with your, your paints. And sorry, that's just a gross jar. I'm using my gross jar. It will stick with your paints and still keep it thick. It'll thin it out without making it watery. I'm going to use a little bit of baby skin, color number two. This is a bountiful baby tub. Yuck, this hair is gross. I'm going to work that in there. And then I have a new tub of um, Flesh 08. And that is a little bit more pale and it has a tiny bit more yellow in it. And I'm trying to match the color of my vinyl the best that I can. So baby skin has a little bit more pink. This has a little bit more yellow, and we'll put them together. We'll see what we get, and ooh, that looks good. Let me show you what we have. It's not gonna be perfect, and that's okay. I just wanna get it close. And I think I will put just a tiny bit of the paint thinner, um, just because it's way too thick. To me, that still looks well, I don't know, that looks okay. Do you see that? It's a little bit paler, but if I wiggle it around on top of the baby's head, it, it's a nice blend. So I think what I'm gonna do is go for it. Let me get a sponge with a tiny bit of thinner on it and just wipe that off, because I don't want to have an uneven baby head later. Not that it matters, I'm gonna put hair there anyway. Um, and let's go for it. This is so much fun. We're kind of like reborn pioneers here. I'm guessing I'm not the first person who's tried this, but I didn't find anything online about it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint that on and kind of feather it down. It's looking good so far, but I can tell I'm gonna need several layers. Fingers crossed that there isn't some weird chemical reaction when we bake it. And I'm, you know, I'm treating it the same way I would if I were just regularly painting a reborn baby. Um, again, I don't want you to see that there's, you know, an obvious difference between what was going on with the vinyl and what's going on with the ears and nose. I want it to be pretty subtle. Hard to do with dark gray and super pale peachy baby skin. So I am going to probably pop this in. I'm gonna just pat that out a little bit more and pop this in the oven and fingers crossed, we'll get a little bit of coverage. The way I'm looking at it, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be quick if it works at all. I'm gonna be going at this for a while. I'm, my guess is I'm gonna be doing about six layers. So I'll show you the difference. So it's getting a little lighter. 
So let me go pop her in the oven and I'll come back and give you a peek. I'm going to bake at 265, seven minutes. Okay, here we are after baking our first layer. And it looks like it's sticking and it didn't get damaged and nothing weird's happening. So I'm going to do another Hi, layer. This is the second layer. It, um, it's getting there. It's getting there slowly. I'm going to go for a third layer. We'll be back. Good morning, everyone. I'm a little bummed out this morning. I have the third flesh layer on my elf baby over the epoxy to see if it will work. And it's holding up really nicely on the nose. I even add a little, little yellow tint. And it looks good. I think it looks, I mean, one more layer and I think we're there. Unfortunately, and I don't know why, when the ears came out and I rubbed them, the paint started to come off. And I noticed that this ear is a little loose. And this ear is a little loose here. I don't know if you can see it in the crack. So I'm having the same problem I had with the Avi. So I'm wondering if, it might, if I might not need to just epoxy those on a bit. I'll do that later. Um, with a really, really fine wire. I'll just put some um, E6000 in there just to make sure they stay on. But this is a little disturbing. So what I did was I took sandpaper and I sanded it over lightly just to take off what was coming off. And the funny thing is, some of it is staying on really well, but some of it is coming off. I cannot figure it out. The only thing I can think of is these are the most smooth spots. And maybe the, a little bit, the little rougher spots are holding on better. I don't know. What I'm going to do is experiment, and I'm going to add some matte varnish to the paint and bake it again at a higher temperature and see if that won't hold on a layer. I think I'm going to remove all of this the best that I can and start over again. And I'll varnish up the nose just in case because I don't want to lose this. I think it's super, super Another cute. little update. Just got the baby out of the oven and I put matte varnish on the ears and the nose and look at how shiny that is. What is going on? So I'm going to put a, a flesh layer mixed with matte varnish over that and see what happens. It's still gray, it's shiny, and it's a little sticky. Also, now the nose is starting to lift off over here, just like um, I experienced with the Avatar. So it looks like I'm gonna need to epoxy some bits, and I'm gonna stop here trying to Genesis heat set paint um, epoxy. It doesn't work. Or I'm doing something wrong, or I just don't know. I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start painting the baby with regular Genesis heat set paint, the whole baby, except leave out ears and nose. And then at the end, I will um, work in some air dry paint, some acrylic and some powders and see if I can't make this work. And I'll have to uh, use some epoxy glue to get the ears and nose down, make sure they don't pop off. That would be so disturbing. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the next layers I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my yellow layers and my blue layers, and I'll be right back. Here we are again. Um, let me show you the mess that I have made. Here's what happened. I was doing some layers on the baby, pretending like I was just gonna paint it like a regular reborn, and it turns out that the paint thinner is what was pulling the paint off the epoxy, if you can believe it. So that was actually a kind of a happy accident because now I know what the deal is. It wasn't that the epoxy didn't want it. The, the epoxy doesn't want the paint thinner. And paint thinner is a solvent. Um, you know, it just is. And so it was doing its job, really. Look at how messy that ear is. So I'm going back and I'm removing all of the paint that I did. I'm basically stripping down that epoxy. And um, I'm going to do any repairs that I need to make, get all this cleaned up. I'm actually using the paint thinner to clean it up, which is kind of a blessing. I'm basically just putting some of that on and letting it soften up that paint a little bit and scraping it off. I'm using a tiny little toothpick. That's kind of torturous. Yeah, this is coming off. I mean, not super easy, but it's coming off. So I'm gonna scrape, 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 clean it all up, make repairs, wash it, let it dry, and come back and we'll work on it some more.